Ready? All right, Flexible Eaters, it's Joe Nissim and myself here. For those of you that don't know Joe, one of my the best friends in the entire world, one of my best friends on the planet. Debatably. He's <laughs> embarrassed about it, but he is, whether he wants to admit it or not. And I met Joe, he's the founder, CEO, president, anything else? No. That's it, <laughs> of Strengthly. And for those of you that haven't tried Strength Lead, it's the protein I drink. You know, I don't take a ton of supplements, but when I have some protein powder, it's always, always, always Strength Lead. And not just because he's my buddy, because I believe in it. I started taking it before he was my friend, and I continue to take it. And Joe's in the nutrition world as well. Strength Lead's all about flexible eating and forming good nutrition habits. So staying with Joe for the week while I'm doing some seminars here in New Jersey, and we just can't stop talking about nutrition. But we're not making inappropriate jokes. So, a lot of inappropriate jokes. <laughs> so we, we said, hey, let's just sit down and talk about this. Because I think what Joe and I do that's unique to the nutrition world is talk about real stuff. It's not just about this is what you need to eat and this is why you need to do it. But we both have our own unique story and our own unique relationship with food that we've overcome and that we continue to work on every single day. So I'll let Joe talk a little bit about himself. Okay, cool. Um, like Jay said, my name is Joe Nissim. I founded Strengthly. Um, and we recently relaunched the site and we've been working with a lot of flexible eaters and teaching them a lot of the principles that Jay taught me a year ago. And some of the things that I wanted to talk about today was something that comes up with almost every flexible eater that literally nobody's talking about. I think anybody could really set numbers but I think the thing that differentiates whether somebody succeeds on a program or not is not those numbers, but actually overcoming a relationship with them. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is a big, big, big topic, and, and hopefully we can get somewhat deep into this today. But one of the things that I explain to the flexible eaters that I work with is no matter what, you have to improve your relationship with food if you're doing something that's not a 30-day challenge, but it's gonna be for the next 30 years of your life. So, I asked Jay to do this video, one, for our Strengthly Nation, but I think this is appropriate for everybody, would you agree? 100%, 100%. this is necessary for, I think you nailed it. I give out numbers, people watch the videos, they get right. numbers, and I'm kind of the, my attack is always relationship with food, relationship right. with food, and, and you right. are as well, right. and I think, yeah, I think it's hands down the biggest topic that we address. Right, because you know? anyone, tons of nutrition coaches out there, here are your numbers, follow them. Right. But I think, I've always said this about coaching, and Joe is a big time Olympic lifter, he understands coaching. The worst athletes make the best coaches. Do you agree with that? 100%. Right, so I'm not, you know, people see me in, on Instagram and Facebook and they're like, oh, Jay's a good CrossFit athlete. I'm decent, I'm average. But at best, but everything I do and have done in my athletic career from CrossFit to wrestling to jiu-jitsu has been because I'm stubborn as hell and won't quit. It's not because I'm gifted. So, and I think it's the same thing with nutrition. We've both overcome significant relationship problems with food. Right. And so I think we probably come from slightly, we ended up coming from slightly different points of view, but we ended up in the same spot, mm -hmm. right? So... One of the things that we that comes up, and I'm writing some content on this for our Strengthly Nation, is something that I call PTDD, which is Post Traumatic Diet Disorder. And this is either from yo-yo dieting, from trying everything that's potentially out there, for some of you high school wrestlers who still have that inside of you for the low carbers, the high fat, all this. And when they come to the flexible eating and realize that this is not by any means a low carb diet, by any means a high fat diet, but it is balanced, a lot of that starts to go away. So I'll tell you my story. My story stems, I could tell you the exact day where my relationship with food changed. That was October 20th, 1995. That was the day my father died. And from that day on, food was comfort. It was a huge part of how we coped with the pain of losing a parent. And to this day, I still battle it. 
I'm much better off, and I think you'd agree, I'm much better than where I was a year ago. Oh, for sure, yeah. But there's always that every time that I am stressed out, whether it's work or whatever it happens to be. You got a person living with you for a week. Or whether it's a <laughs> psychopath living with you for a week. Um, it's really easy to jump into the cabinets and eat an entire bag of chips. And, but I think that's important too that people hear this because you're a coach, I'm a coach, and they must they think, oh, you guys know what you're doing. Every day is a struggle. Right. Like right. there's people see that I eat pop tarts, don't think for one second I don't want another pop tart when I'm okay. done with what I'm supposed to eat. Of course. Or I'm traveling this week. I go to the CrossFit Games next week. It's hard every day, and oh, like luckily I'm staying with Joe, so he's got these pre-made meals. What meal company is that? Uh, Fit Fuel Prep. Fit Fuel Prep. They're amazing meals if you want to try them out. And it's, you know, we've gone. Yesterday Joe wanted to, you know, we go out to eat after the seminar. We went to Chipotle, so it was easier to measure, but. It's a struggle. All every day for us, Absolutely. it's a struggle. It's you know when it comes down to it, I think the difference between people who succeed on the program and don't succeed is not the fact that they don't have those urges and those temptations; is that they learn to control them. So I think anybody, regardless of weight, whether you have a six pack, and I've lost a bunch of weight, but I still got a waist. You've lost to go. forty pounds. I've lost forty, it's but I still impressive. got um, a ways to go. Is that I still deal with that. You know, at the end of a night, it's nine o'clock, maybe I skipped a meal. I am very much tempted to go in instead of having one or two peanut butter cookies because that's what finishes off my day to eat the entire box. <laughs> it's hard, it's hard, and I think that's, you, you've done a great job learning that. I think people need to, so what is your way of, how do you control that? How do I control that? How do you, you know, so for example, it's the same thing. I save, say, 70 carbs, five fat for my two Pop-Tarts at the end of the day. Sure. I eat my two Pop-Tarts. I want two more. But mentally, you know, like I said earlier about training, I'm just stubborn. I get it from my father. I'm a, I'm a head down and grind kind of person. Right. And it's the same mentality when it comes to my nutrition. I, I'm black and white. I'm done. Right. There's no more Pop-Tarts to be eaten tonight because I'm done. That's, that's how I deal with it. Right. In the past, it would have been like more and more and more because I wouldn't have had this black and white number. What do you do? Well, I think there's... I'll tell you exactly how I got over this because this is, this is actually really important. When I... It was probably about six or eight months ago. I had been eating pretty much for majority whole foods. And you and I were talking. You said you really got to start integrating some foods that you like because otherwise you're going to go right back to that mm -hmm. video. So... I made it a point, I went to the Dwayne Reed, which is right down the street, I bought a bag of M&M's. Like a big bag of M&M's. Brown, like the regular M&M's or peanut M&M's? Uh, peanut, the peanut butter M&M's. Sounds good, sounds good. <laughs> so, I you don't get a lot of those, because they're high in fat. No, so you don't. So my goal, and this is what I, what I tell everybody, is my goal was to have some every day, and so I wanted to keep it in the house for a week. So you're challenging yourself. So I challenged myself, and I did this in phases, right? So that was my first challenge, and it took me, on that first challenge, I finished that bag, and it, it, it's a big bag, and I finished it in nine days. So I met my goal of seven, and I actually kept it two. Awesome. Because, so I think one of the best things about Flexible, and you said this last night in your seminar, was try to go 80-20. 80% of good whole foods, the things that we know are good for us, the chicken, the broccoli, the beef, the rice, all that good stuff that we know is good for our body and it's very easy to try. Not 20% of that. Well, I found that a lot of it lost its luster once I knew I could have it tomorrow. I agree and I think that's, I say that in the seminar as well. When I started it was all cinnamon toast crunch all right. the time. Right. And then at some point you're like, I can have this again tomorrow. Right. It's not a big deal. And I found that most of the time, I didn't even want it. Like the, the things that I was buying, I didn't even really like or want them. I just wanted to have it as a spite measure. So once the novelty wore off that I could eat it, I really kind of started to save things for the things that I really liked. Mm -hmm. Right? Like I like M&M's. I don't love M&M's. Right? 
I like peanut butter cups a lot more. You know, so you I saved like, up for those for instead. those. And instead. I notice now, just being here, I see you eat a little bit of chocolate every night. Correct. So you're able to now take something you applied right. and continue with it for the long term. Correct. And and I 